from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California. This is the Adam Corolla Show with Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects. We'll play the Rotten Tomatoes game. We'll run the first round of the most disgusted women to sleep with Adam. And Dan Dunn drops in for some holiday cocktails. And now, something something Hanukkah, something something labia menorah. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. A choice bit again. I'm your man, did you get it on? Thanks for tuning in and thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. Handball, Brian. Drunk. <coughs> I'm drunk. Nope, that's for later in the show. That's so. for later when Dan Dunn swings by. Uh, nice job, Dawson. Uh, all sheep and no wise men. Very, right. very good line. Very good line. All right. So uh, we got a lot to do today. Um, I was just sitting around thinking about uh, we talk uh, we talk a lot about uh, statutory rape rock and um, we talk uh, about tool tunes. But I was thinking about wuss rock and uh, I was thinking about like wuss rock. The definition of wuss rock was sort of, uh, you know, Sonny and Cher were singing. I just want to be friends with you. You know, there's a, a lot of that stuff was coming out of San Francisco about just, I want, uh, I'd like to get to know you. Right. Yes, I want. You're, right. you're so inspired by someone that you write a song about them, yet you're soft pedaling it all the way. Like, hey, can we hold hands? Yeah, like most rock songs are about getting down or coming to a town and parting down and loving your women and coming back and being a rambling man. We talk a lot about <laughs> rambling. But oh, yeah. there is an equal, almost equal number of sort of wuss rock songs. And to me... Nothing typifies the wuss rock like uh, the band Bread. And uh, and also, I was taking a little deeper dive into the band Bread, and uh, they they sing it, but they back it up, too, because uh, I'll tell you about the lead singer, David Gates, and how long he's been married and so on and so forth. But uh, all right, so do we have... There's a number of wuss... Uh, bread was mostly wuss rock, but... We're- were dudes allowed to listen to bread? <clears throat> well, we didn't have a choice because it was pumped into the radio, and that's right. all we all we had back then. I don't think any dude ever bought a bread album unless he was playing it, trying to get a chick uh, lubed up with some malt liquor and then uh, drop a right. digit on her. But right. it, it was the stuff you played so that they thought <laughs> you were unthreatening. All right. So uh, we got most disgusted. Uh, sorry, most disgusted to have sex with me, round one. Uh, the votes have been uh, tallied and tabulated. We got the first round. Is it 10 people? I, I have not seen this list. I have no idea who's on this list. So uh, this is the top first round. This has been a tumultuous year. Finally, it appears the most important election of our lifetime is over. All legal challenges have been exhausted. And the votes have been counted. The people have spoken. We have the definitive 2020 rankings of the women who would be most disgusted to have sex with Adam. You had many good suggestions. We'll go through the top 30 over the next three days. But before we look at the ladies who ranked 30 through 21, first, some honorable mentions in the top 100 were surprised didn't rank higher. She doesn't get as much ink as AOC, but she's still part of the squad and would certainly be disgusted to have sex with Adam. At number 67, Massachusetts Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. Oh, yeah. Not a fan. She probably has no idea who Adam is, but since she's in the news, we're surprised number 48 didn't rank higher. Vanderbilt kicker, Sarah Fuller. <laughs> oh, oh, man. She's no, she likes a good long snapper. Yeah, long snapper. Come on now. She'd strangle herself with one of her scarves or inject herself with bleach if she had to have <laughs> sex with Adam. Good thing she only got to 68 on the list. Dr. Deborah Burks. Mm, interesting choice. Deep cut, but good. And... She's outraged and horrified about everything. So she definitely would be if she had sex with Adam. Only coming in at number 59, let's find out what she thinks about her placement on the list. 
Nancy Grace. Well, I'll tell you, I am outraged, Adam. I'm mm. outraged that I wasn't number one because truer words have never been spoken because there is not a snowball's chance in hell, Adam. <laughs> I would lay down in a marital bed with you when you don't do everything in your power to keep your kids and your kinfolk from being snatched from their beds every night as they sleep. I feel like we could go out and look for Natalie Holloway's real killer together. I don't, I don't. As much as a fun and romantic romp of a date as that sounds, Adam, there is no way I would let you get to second base with me. All right. Okay. And by the way, the new definition of second base is dry anal, so I think we'll be in good shape there. Okay, third. All right, so now we get to the top, or the first batch, first round of 10. We start with the comeback queen. She was number 13 in 2018, dropped to 55 in 2019, Mm. but fought her way back to number 30 this year. She'd have trouble watching her weight because she'd gouge her eyes out after having sex with Adam. Number 30, Oprah Winfrey. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Our next nominee may be dead, but that doesn't mean she wouldn't have been disgusted to have sex with Adam on this side of the mortal coil. Number 29, R.I.P. R.B.G. Mm. You would know. (laughs) Holding her position in the top 30 from last year, she wouldn't want to be in missionary position with Adam. She'd be disgusted to make whoopee with the ace man. Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, strong. Well, it doesn't be though. funny at all. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. She's a senator. She's a Democrat. And she's 87. For those reasons, and more, she'd be disgusted to have sex with Adam. Diane Feinstein. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's scowling at the thought. She called him out on Twitter for his comments on COVID. She'd probably rather have sex with her ex's recently deceased corpse than Adam and would have to recover from having sex with the Ace Man one day at a time. At number 26, Valerie Bertinelli. Oh, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. Yeah, that's that's hard for you. She didn't get the Democratic nomination, and it doesn't look like she's getting a cabinet position either. Having sex with Adam would cap off a very disappointing year for number 25, Elizabeth Warren. Oh, yeah, she's she's good looking for her age, I gotta say. One of the few people on the list that Adam actually had a shot with. This chick doesn't want to see his dick. Number 24, (laughs) Natalie Maines. Oh, yeah. What happened to us? Well (laughs) done. Number six on last year's list. Number 23 this year. She'd kick his balls if he tried to have sex with her. Megan Rapinoe. Oh, yeah. 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 Not a fan. Not a fan. Now, between the modeling and the baking, he'd definitely want to have sex with this nominee as much as she wouldn't. Chrissy Teigen. Mm, Yeah, Yeah. I got to say, that banana bread? Mm. Yeah. (laughs) And rounding out this round, number 21, was number 44 as far as first ladies go. And having sex with Adam is the last thing she'd want. (laughs) She would be disgusted if Ace of Ace becoming inside of her. Michelle Obama. Wow. This is a very strong first round, man. I can't believe there's uh, 20 more lucky ladies out there who don't want to have sex with me. (laughs) Well, tune in tomorrow to find out who's in the teens. The 2020 definitive list of the women most disgusted to have sex with Adam. You have to do it. The people want to know. The people deserve to know. Yeah, they have a right. (laughs) All right, we got the Rotten Tomatoes game. We got Dan Dunn. Uh, Let me tell you about uh, Luckbox, the Control Freak's new guide to life, money, and probability for investors, traders, entrepreneurs, side hustlers, gamblers, probability geeks, Each issue is a deep dive into the current business or a cultural theme. Timely stories on investment trends, gambling, politics, sports, uh, whiskey, beer, cannabis, and more. Ten plus editorial awards in its first year. Best new magazine of 2019, 2020. Luckbox will make you a wiser investor, a smarter trader, 
a better gambler, and maybe even a little luckier. It's Luckbox, right, Dawson? Luckbox is available in print for subscribers and on newsstands for $7.99 an issue. But with this special offer, get 10 issues, one year of Luckbox, absolutely free, no credit cards, no bullshit, no bait and switch. Just Luckbox, in your inbox for free. Make your own luck. Get Luckbox. Subscribe for free today at GetLuckbox. GetLuckbox.com slash Adam. All right, we'll take a quick break. Come back to the Rotten Tomatoes game right after this. Listen to that noise. That's a high pulsed voice. That can only mean one thing, and you can feel it. Got some names of flicks, and the gang makes their picks. Guessing if it's rotten or fresh. If they guess it is. It's the Rotten Tomatoes game. You know how we do it. Give me the Rotten Tomatoes game. Now it's time to play it. All right. Dawson's got the theme. Dan Dunn's going to tell us all about the great uh, holiday cocktails we can uh, whip up in a couple of few. But first, Rotten Tomatoes. Well, happy Hanukkah to everyone out there from all of us at the Rotten Tomatoes game. Thank you. You know, some people say that Jews run all of show business. Mm-hmm. Yet in 2020, we still can't get a decent Fakakta Hanukkah movie. Mm. Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights. Are you kidding me? Sadly, no miracles will make this Hanukkah oil last for five rounds. So we're not featuring Hanukkah movies per se. Instead, we'll deal with movies that highlight Jewish culture. Well, this ought to be good. <laughs> we'll begin with one of the most famous musicals of all time. As Gina recently pointed out, all of those real bearded Santas have to yep. work during the summer, so why not play the iconic role of Tevya? Singing and dancing, despite the presence of oppressive Sarsist Russia, the production was made famous on stage, but how do people like the movie version? From 1971, Fiddler on the Roof. Zero Mustel. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Topol. I did oh, not. Topol did it. Yeah, I I didn't see this. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was a huge success. Everyone knew what it was. I Um, I haven't seen it either. But we haven't seen it. But what's not to like already? I don't know. I was trying to sound Jewish there. (laughs) Um, it's it can't be. This can't be rotten. It's a it's a musical, and it's kind of a hate crime to give this uh, a bad bad review, right. right? That's exactly right. Uh, well, were there woke reviews in 1971? No, no, there, probably, there weren't. That's a good point, Brian. People weren't partial to the Jews until the last couple of decades. Um, That's a good point. All Just right. List. <clears throat> Let's see. I say people liked it. I say it's a classic. For that reason, I'm going 88. A little lower. I don't know anything about this, so I'll just guess at 71. Who must know the way to make a quiet home, a quiet home, a kosher home? Who must raise a family and run the home? So Papa's free to read the holy book. 89. Ooh, nice. Fiddler on the Roof. Certified fresh at 83. Mm. Oh. All right. Close game. A priest and a rabbi both fall in love with the same girl. It sounds like the setup to a terrible joke, but it's actually the plot of a romantic movie starring Ben Stiller, Ed Norton, and Jenna Elfman. The film is also the directorial debut of Ed Norton and features a supporting cast of legendary Jewish actors playing the soulful elders from the year 2000, Keeping the Faith. Anybody see this? No. No. It had a, it, it felt like they came up with the title before they <laughs> came up with the premise. It just, just, this movie and the poster feel like what would be in the in the office of a fictitious producer, right? Yes, on a, yes. On totally a, generic. Right. They couldn't have liked this, but, you know, it's a likable cast. It's a good cast. Ed Norton's no slouch. Hmm. Now, this is the kind of thing that could be, hey, it was, it was okay. It was uh, 67. But this could also be 23. We don't, we just don't know on this one. Based on the likability of Stiller, Norton, and Janet Elfman, I'm going to say Rotten at 44. A little lower, 37. Rotten at 
44. Mm. Keeping the faith is fresh. Oh. <gasps> at 69. Oh, uh -oh. wow. Nice. Higher than the audience. Audience at 59. All right. Damn it. Steven Spielberg produced this Don Bluth animated drama about a young mouse whose family <laughs> emigrates to the United States after their house is destroyed by Russian cats. He's separated from his family before washing up on the shores of New York and gets help from a city cat voiced by Dom DeLuise as he searches for his loved ones from 1986, An American Tale. Is there a sadder song in cinema history than somewhere out there? Hmm. Didn't see this. There are no cats in America. in America, and the streets are paved with cheese. So you guys saw it, I guess, in yeah. your youth. <laughs> Gina, many years later, yeah, but that's I right. Saw, I, saw I saw it, it like in the theater. I yeah, think. I saw it on Netflix. Um, all right, survival. Oh, can't have a beef. A right, you gotta like this stuff. I mean, I don't know how good it was. <laughs> yeah, it's a movie that I saw when I was a kid. I couldn't tell you as an adult how good it Same. is. I. I feel like they got to cut a break to these kinds of movies. I have no Don idea. Don Bluth was going up against Disney. Like, this was his big charge against Disney, this era. Was, it was epic. You said that Dom DeLuise was the voice of the mouse? No. No, of the, the cat he meets in America. Oh, the cat. All right. Uh, no idea. I think <laughs> uh, this is back. You know, they cut a little slack uh. for the kids' stuff. Probably had a good message. I'm going to go 77. I went back to the uh, well, 71. You got to be kidding me, Adam. You seriously got to be kidding me. 77. What? We've yep. done three of these and you, we got 44, 77. Two of the three have been the same yeah. number? And wow. the other two were like three apart. I mean, the other one was three apart. Wow. Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is somebody's getting a five-point deduction. Mm. Ah. Mm. The bad news is that I didn't say two people are getting it. Oh. Oh. An American Tale is fresh at 71. Mm. Oh. oh, boy. You may be in the driver's seat. Mel Brooks's schmaltzy borscht belt sense of humor can be felt in every one of his films. And while he often casts himself, his Jewiest role is probably in his Robin Hood parody, where he plays Jewish. Rabbi Tuckman. Inspiring the merry men to drink some sacramental wine and consider how much the ladies love circumcision. With an all-star cast ranging from Carrie Elways to Richard Lewis to Dave Chappelle. From 1993, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. I have no handle on this. I, I've, was this as funny as we thought it was? Let's just say it's a bad sign that I haven't seen it. You haven't. This, this should have been the the movie that like made my year, and I never even bothered. It it probably had. It it probably had a couple of funny little vignettes in yeah. it, but it probably didn't hold together very well. Just there was a couple of th things that would be funny to put on a trailer. That's what that's kind of the phase that Mel Brooks was in. He was in there like, well, I'm going to string together a bunch of vignettes. Mm -hmm. Most of them won't work. Some will be funny. And uh, that'll be that'll be the movie. No more sort of through line. No more. No more of the I don't know. You're sort of blazing saddles, Mel Brooks. Right. All right. So it's got to be rotten. But how rotten is it? I'm going to say. Fairly rotten at 37. <laughs> Ooh, right there with you, man. 33. 39. Wow, Gina. Robin Hood, Men in Tights, is rotten at 40. Mm. Wow. wow, we got a game here, people. <laughs> Finally, Barbara Streisand plays a young woman who is taught oh, I love this that movie. girls are forbidden to study religious scripture. When her father dies... She disguises herself as a man, enrolls in a religious school, and finds love along the way. The film was also co-written and directed by Barbara Streisand from 1983. This is nuts. It's Yentl. called Yentl. I, uh, it's always a weird conceit when they do those movies where the chick dresses up as a dude and then goes into the ninth grade and then finds another dude who takes a shining to him yeah. in a sexual way, but he's not gay. 
Right. Like just one of the guys. How do we do? How does this math pencil out? Mm-hmm. You, it's it's he he thinks she. He, he thinks she is a dude is a really cool guy. And so he wants to spend time with this cool guy, but doesn't know this cool guy is falling in love with them. Mm, okay. I, I, I don't wish that for my son. <laughs> That's just me. All right. Uh, this is it. Uh, this game is knotted up. Uh, there, there can't be more than four or five points separating uh, first from last in this game. So this is anyone's game at this point. Now, I didn't see it because I didn't want to see it. Because of the the description that that you just heard. But um, they had to like this movie, right? And I mean, are we talking about 71 or are we talking about 89 here? Because that's uh, going to separate the... uh, Whoever gets closest on this one may just walk away with the with the title here i'm gonna say fresh at 78 Mm. barely fresh at 67 might have gone too high but i remember yentl being just excellent 86 it is going to be a tight game because yentl is fresh (gasps) at 65 oh Oh, the the death strike that what was Holy yours, Brian? Balls. Sixty what? Sixty-seven, motherfucker! Oh man, that, yeah, that's that gonna do it. Could have done it. That and the five-point deduction oh, could have really shit. brought it over the edge for bald. I'm angry. <laughs> I can't wait to drink. <laughs> well, we're not separated by single digits, but it's close. Adam Carolla coming in hard with a score of fifty-two. Solid round and a great effort. Gina Grad, your score lands at 59. Oh, mm. shamed. A Shonda for the Goy. Leaving us <laughs> bald Brian. The five point deduction certainly helped, but he was still far away until it got to Yentl. Oh, Yentl. Two points away from that score, leaving bald Brian with a score of. Gentle soup. For the win, 48. Oh, Whee! man. That was a close game. That was a close game, and it really had to get the Yentl in there. It's the Wild and Tomatoes game. You know how we do it. All right, Dan Dunn's going to talk us through some holiday cocktails. First, I'll tell you about the Simply Safe. Everyone wants to keep their home and family safe from break ins, fire, flood. Medical emergencies, Simply Safe Home Security award winning 24 7 protection. Not only an arsenal of cameras and sensors, you get uh, the best professional monitors in the business. They've got your back day and night, ready to send police, fire, or EMTs. Uh, these guys have been with us for about a decade. We all use it here. It's peel and stick. The batteries last up to 10 years. You can set it up yourself in about 30 minutes. You just order what you need, it shows up in the mail. And uh, then uh, Simply Safe's professionals take over, monitoring your home 24 7, ready to send help at a moment's notice when they hear the alarm. No long term contracts, no hidden fees, no installation costs. It's Simply Safe, right, Dawson? Right now, our listeners get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash Adam. You also get a 60 day risk free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash Adam for your free security camera today. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. All right, Dan Dunn is going to uh, join us via Zoom. He's going to walk us through some uh, cocktails for the holidays. So you guys want to? Uh, you guys may want to get out a pad and take some notes here. We'll take a quick break. We'll do that right after this. Adam Carolla's. I'm your emotional support animal, navigating our all woke, no joke culture. Has over a thousand five star reviews on Amazon. Here's one. I feel great and the song loud. I know that I know along and this is good about the hypersensitive world if you are. Well said. Pick up I'm Your Emotional Support Animal, navigating our all woke, no joke culture, and leave your five star review on Amazon. Get all the links at adamcarolla.com. 
Dan Dunn is joining us. He's a journalist. He's a spirits expert. He's got a podcast, What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn, and uh, lots of great guests on that. And you can also check out his Twitter, The Imbiber, as well. Good to see you again, my friend. Hey, guys. How are you? Doing well. What do you got for us today? Oh, we're about to be doing Weller. Uh, this is, we're going to be doing some holiday drinks uh, today to try to wrap up the year. Uh, I, what I've done now is I've got a bunch of readily available, affordable ingredients, easy to make at home and delicious. People always ask me, a lot of your fans hit me up on social media, Adam, and they say, what are your go-to spirits? Everything we're drinking tonight is in my go-to well, okay? And, and another thing, so everybody knows this, I'm going to put every recipe with a photo and the exact specific how you make it on my Instagram, WWD underscore podcast. So every drink we're going to have tonight, you'll have all the recipes right there at the Instagram thing. So easy. You guys ready to do some drinking? Yeah. All right. The first holiday cocktail we're going to be doing is called the Agave Maria. And we're going to be making this with tequila ocho and fever tree soda water. Now you may be asking yourself, Adam, how is this a holiday cocktail? Yes, club soda. soda or soda water, right? Well, you have to put it in a festive holiday cocktail, ah, and see. then and then it qualifies. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our ice here in the cup, mm-hmm. and because it's the holidays, and I don't really give a shit anymore. You can put as much tequila in there as you want. Normally, I would say you know go two ounces, and then you top it off with this with the Fever Tree soda water. But you can do it as much as you want to do here. Now, the key is the, the tequila that we're drinking, which is tequila ocho. I mean, it's just it doesn't get better than this. Carlos Camarina and Thomas Estes are the two guys that founded this. They're legends in the business, okay? This is a the world's first single estate tequila. I thought you would dig this, Adam, because each vintage is harvested from a single field, meaning vintage to vintage, you're going to get different nuances with tequila. So it's the concept of terroir with tequila. So it's the wine concept, okay? And we're using, of course, 100% blue agave. They actually use overripe agave, which is extremely unusual. That's So you're going to get a slight sweetness in this that you would typically not get with other tequilas. So How much Dan, is, is a, a bottle of this stuff? A bottle of this is about $45. It's yeah. Not bad. So, so yeah, I'm going to do this cocktail, Dan. Oh yeah, ice, and I'm gonna I'm I'm actually gonna do two ounces of tequila. I'm gonna measure that out. I'm gonna dump it in my glass, and then you're just gonna top it off with, with the uh, soda. And you know I, we say this every time I'm on the show, but you know I like to reiterate: don't use crappy mixers. If you use crappy mixers, it doesn't matter how good the alcohol you're using, your drink's gonna suck. So I'm gonna pour this in here, just top it off. Wow. That uh, yeah. tequila's really got a lot of flavor to it. It is. It's one of the most flavorful tequilas on the market. I mean, it's a. Um, I just again, it's that overripe agave. This is a grower producer tequila, which is also special. That means the brand owns the agave fields, which they use to create the tequila. That is not normally the teca- the case. They almost always in tequila are farming out their agave and whatnot. In this case, they get to oversee the whole thing. So. I poured my soda in, and uh, guys, first uh, cheers of the holiday to you cheers guys. Cheers, dear. Yeah, yeah. Man, bottoms up. What do you think? Mm. For what is uh, clear tequila and soda water or club soda, there's a lot going on in that drink. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised. You know, if you just said tequila and soda water, I'd think like, all right, that's how if you're on a diet and you want to catch a buzz, you're not too into flavor. That seems like the way to go. But uh, this tequila has got a lot going on in it. Yeah, Dan, this would, is, it, would, it, would oh, a little bit of lime like mess this drink up? Or no, not at all. In fact, I have some right here on my glass, and I can just Ooh. squeeze that right in there. In fact, I think it'll enhance it a little bit. This is one of those ones, Ace, where if you go to the craft cocktail joints in L.A. or New York or any, it's always going to be one of the go-tos. You're going to see this on every cocktail list, Tequila Ocho. Mm-hmm. It's that good. And, and, and that's the thing with tequila. There are so many options, as you know, but... This is in my, there's probably five that I would take with me on an island, five, to, and this is certainly one of them. So that's, you know, again, a lot of your uh, fans hit me up on social and they're always asking about tequila. Your fans seem to really like tequila. So this is one I go for. This is a Plata. It's an unaged tequila 
As we know, Reposado is any tequila that's aged two months to a year. Anything over that's on Yeho. Uh, and then anything over three years is an extra on Yeho. So. You know, it's so nice. You know, I, I think about tequilas and I kind of think about cars. Like when I got out of high school, every car was a piece of shit. There's nothing you wanted that was even new. Like even the stuff that was traditionally good, like a Corvette or a Mustang in 1982 was a piece of shit. Like nothing really worked. There were no choices. Everything was a piece of shit. And tequila was kind of that way. There was nothing good. The, about the best you could do is get gold, anything gold, Cuervo gold or something. Somehow that was, uh, you're living the high life. But there's so many varieties. They're so good. They're generally affordable. Like it's a, it's a good time to be an alcoholic. It, 40, $45 for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to beat it. I mean, we've had, I've come on here before and done some tequilas. And I think when you're in that price range for this quality, it's, it's, it's the way to go. So yeah, uh, I nice. noticed that uh, this tequila bottle has more than just the uh, one You've cocktail been... we've poured. Christy is quite enjoying this. She's a tequila fan and she's like, this is delightful. I'm like, yes, it really is. And it looks good too. I mean, we've talked about this before on the show. I, I want a good looking bottle in my bar. You yes. know, especially now when I, you know, you got no option. I'm not going to any other bars. So I want my home bar to look good. It's a good looking bottle. So yeah, I, I recommend that one. And I'm glad you guys are digging it. Yeah. I'm the not, I'm not sure oh. where Gina is, but uh, we'll soldier on until she pops we'll back soldier up. Soldier on without her. I, yeah. It's, it's sad. I'll drink her portion. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Now this is kind of special guys. I, I, I reached out to my friend, Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff is arguably the most famous bartender in America. He's the guy that most people credit with sort of the craft cocktail resurgence in America 30 years ago. He's a legend, mm -hmm. one of the most famous bartenders in the world. I told him I'm coming on your show. I said, can you, can you give us a recipe? a holiday recipe for the Adam Carolla show. And he did, he came up with this, this cocktail called, he dubbed it the pan damn it martini. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'll tell everybody this, if you buy one book to learn how to make drinks, just one, it's Dale's book, the new craft of the cocktail, everything you need to know, think like a master mixologist, you will be a better bartender for it. Okay. So now this is the recipe that Dale uh, came up with it, First off the gin. It is called Drum Shambo Gunpowder Irish Gin. Now, Adam, you'll be forgiven if you've never heard of Drum Shambo. It's a <sighs> tiny town in Ireland that lists a guy named Charles McGettigan as the sole notable resident on its Wikipedia page. He won the Eurovision contest uh, 40 years ago. Okay, so hmm. this gin is an Irish gin, and the first time I had it a few years ago, I was absolutely blown away. Uh, they opened in 2014, I believe. It's the first distillery in that area in 100 years. And what's amazing about this gin is they infuse it with gunpowder tea. It's a slow, dry green tea that just imbues this gin with this fresh spiciness. And it was voted the best gin in Ireland, I think, the last four years. And if you can't trust the Irish when it comes to drinking, well, right. you really shouldn't. You shouldn't be drinking. Right? I, I agree. Dan, yeah. what's the difference between Irish? Is there a difference in Irish gin and like London dry gin, the gin we all know from the stores? Yeah, I mean, London Dry has a certain flavor profile. Again, this one being made with tea, I think what you're getting a lot more is you're getting uh, a lot of citrus and juniper and the spice, though, that's coming from that tea. So you're getting some coriander in there. There's a spice called meadow sweet that you that, I, wow. that I've I'm come to know. I'm smelling it. There is a lot happening in that. And so what we're going to do for this one, and I've, I've ex uh, expedited this, it's three ounces of drum shambo. And then Dale's recipe calls for a quarter ounce of Martini Ambrato Reserva Special. That's a vermouth. And mm -hmm. then another vermouth called Dolan, which is a legendary vermouth, uh, and a quarter ounce of that. So quarter ounce of the Martini Ambrato Reserva Special, quarter of the Dolan, three ounces of drum shambo, and you're going to put that in a mixing Poof, glass. Vermouth, Stan, you're a wild man. I'm telling you, man. And then uh, I, we got those. We got that cool bar equipment last time or two times ago, so we'll use that. And you put some ice in there in your mixing glass and you stir it up thusly. Oh, and hey, of course. Oh, Dan, I, sorry, I have a question that I'm going to forget yes. and you're uniquely qualified to, yes. to answer. Give me a few more rocks in there, Max Pata. Uh, the last couple of times, it seems like, I've ordered a martini. The waitress has said, 
would you like it up or on the rocks? And I just say up, but what is a martini on the rocks? Is this something new or what the fuck is she talking about? I mean, you can do it. People do drink it on 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 the rocks. I don't do that. I mean, I'm go I'm about to put it in this uh, fancy little coupe glass that I have right here. Um, right. You, you got to hang out at classier places. I, I guess so. Rocks. That's a bad. Yeah, it's, it's a, so oh, and yeah, yeah. So one last bit of ingredient here. Versus, okay. Dale Dale DeGroff, the guy who ran drink. He has his own bitters. It's called Dale DeGroff's Pimento Bitters. And now, don't overdo it. Ace with this and Brian, don't overdo it. And Gina, wherever you are, uh, out in the ether somewhere. So just like a dash of this bitters, right? We're gonna go boom, and then you stirred that up. We take our strainer. Do we put our bitters in, Max Pana? Okay, yeah. yeah. And this is dash. gonna be. This is gonna be. I mean, the greatest bartender in the world made created this drink for wow. us for the show. So I think this is a special moment on yeah. the Adam Carolla show. A special moment for me. Th that is good. Pan right. dam, pan dam, damn it, pan damn it, uh, martini. Okay, that's good. Mm. Very good, very and good. But uh, no reason, <laughs> no reason why these people should ask me if I want a martini on the rocks, right? I'm sorry, I'm getting back to that. It it happened no, I, the other I would, night. I would, I would, I would even challenge them on that. I'd say, I'm sorry, did you mishear me? I said <laughs> martini. Is that yeah. a server thing? You know what I mean? Like one who's not actually a bartender, Adam? Like, are you? Oh, yeah, server? yeah. No, this is, I, I think if you said, uh, I'd like chicken wings, they'd be like, you want it up or on the rocks? Like, I just think <laughs> that's what they say when you order something. Right. I, the I guess. The bartender would never ask. I don't. That. Like the, the, the trained bartender, but the right. server might. I agree. Gina, just to catch you up on this. What did I miss? Well, this gin, this drum shambo, <laughs> Irish, gun, Irish gunpowder gin. Ooh. It's just, a, it's, that's one of those ones where I, I love to have a conversation piece on my bar as well. And it's a good looking bottle, but Beautiful. it's also, it's an Irish gin. Like you just don't wow. see, and it's so good. It's, it's just so delicious. I love flavors. it. So, and I think Dale's drink is knocking it out of the park. I'm feeling in the holiday spirit right now. Yes, tell you. me too. Yeah, this is wonderful. Oh. Okay. Bottoms up. Now we're going to go with one. I, I thought we should try to do a little rum mm. situation here for the holidays as well, because rum's a drink that I think a lot of people like. So our third one, we're gonna do Dos Maderos and ginger. Now this mm. rum, Dos Maderos five plus three, Dos Maderos means two woods. And what it's talking about is two different types of barrels. So the rums for Dos Maderos originate in the Caribbean in Guyana and Barbados. They spend five years there in barrels and then they go across the Atlantic Ocean to Jerez, Spain, where they're blended together over there. And it is uh, the master blender, Paola Medina Sheldon, fantastic. And this is a, the, the finishing is in sherry casks, okay? 20 year old Palo Cordado sherry cask. And what that is going to add, you're gonna get pecan, vanilla, smoky oak. There's gonna be a lot of flavor to this. So here's the recipe. Wait, sorry, do... sorry, Dan. The, yes. the uh, gunpowder gin, uh, what does that cost a bottle? The gunpowder. Uh, the gunpowder gin. I got this. I got this. Don't worry. Uh, forty to forty-five dollars. All right, right not in that bad. Range. Yeah. And the uh, dos maderos. The dos maderos is thirty-five dollars a bottle. And by the way, you put this stuff on the rocks and drink it, and drink it on the rocks, and it's absolutely delicious. Another thing I would do with it is maybe put it with some coconut water as well, Ooh. which is delicious. But yeah, that's really, really good. So All for right, Brianna. Um, <laughs> what, two ounces coconut two ounces. water. I like that. Coconut water and oh man, it's it's just so good. Yeah, coconut water and rum. All right, is so delicious. how do we make this? Two ounces of the Dos Maderos. Just put so it in our coupe, Dan. What's that? No, this one's going to be in a rocks glass. Right. Yeah, two ounces of that, and and then a half an ounce of fresh lime juice. We never use store bought lime juice. We're using fresh lime Got juice. It. Put that in there, and then you're going to top it off with our. We got the fever tree again. We're doing the ginger beer, and we're going to put that in there. And if you got a lime for garnish, you can do that, but you don't have to. Oh, put some water in it. I'll put and, water in it. I mean, excuse me. I mean, not water. Ice. Ice. What's water called when they when they freeze it? Ice. That's ice. It. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the thing. It's All been right. a long day. All right. So we're putting that in there. Oh, stir that up. Refreshing. Just give it a little stir, and it's going to be really really good and um mm. that is right? good is oh, that yeah. refreshing is that refreshing that yeah. is goddamn refreshing 
I oh, like I like that, the coconut water idea too. Oh yeah, absolutely do it with coke. And again, or just neat. I mean, it's a really great sipping rum as well. Thirty five bucks a bottle, can't beat it. I'm it's excited a good. About- uh, it's it's a good walk around beach buzz too because yes. the because the the red party cups are kind of a tell, right? Like, oh, yeah. But you get the you get the cardboard coconut water. You you take three or four good chugs off it, get your hydration on, then pour a few ounces of the rum into it, put the, you know, mm-hmm. twist the cap back on, shake it up real good. You walk with impunity with that bad boy. <laughs> no one's, the man's not, the fuzz not going to say shit. You're walking around with a coconut water box and you put the, you put the rum in there. You got a nice smooth buzz going while you're just walking the highways and the byways of these great United States, man. Was, was it you or Lynette who pulled that super classy move before the uh, Rose parade? Lynette, Lynette. What was it? Wait, what was that one? A Coke can or something, wasn't it? No, she pour, she mixes red wine and Coca-Cola. Oh, right, right. Yeah, but that's not high enough octane. Let's get the rum in there. <laughs> and but, with the ginger beer, there's a little bit of a sinus cleanse, too. Yeah, this is nice. Adam, let me ask you a question, because mm. normally when I'm on, if we just do a spirit, I know you hate to waste. So you'll either pour it back in the bottle. Now, what do you do on this segment where we have cocktails? I you don't know. I, I you think, can't leave until you finish them. I is think the that? people here know the edict, so we can't we can't throw them out. Luckily, um, Max Zapata is the is a he's a cross between a catfish and one of those rubber trays that's on top of the bar where all the all the booze spills over. He's a kind of catch all. He's 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 a Roomba mixed with a catfish mixed with a uh, bar overspill rubber tray. So none of this is going away, but we'll, we'll, we'll find a place for it, but no, okay. I, we shall we'll not find a stomach for it. We shall not uh, throw away this booze, especially during this time of year. Right. You know, right. you can't waste. Uh, this is delicious. The final drink. And this was, uh, Max Pata told me that you, this is your fate. You love eggnog, Adam. So I, I do. I, I obviously I try not to consume too much of it, but, uh, it's the best. Eggnog's the goddamn best. The goddamn best. Yes. Would it now really be is. the would now be the first to, the time to tell you I've never had eggnog. I have uh, it here. I have yeah, it right here, but I've never tasted it. Nog yourself. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, the, this is going to be a special a special treat for you. Now, I, I, here's what I say to everybody at home: If you can make it, and what the hell else you doing right now? If you can make your own eggnog, do it. Uh, for purposes of expediency here, I went out and I bought a nice eggnog at Whole Foods. I don't have any affiliation with this brand, but a uh, clover eggnog. I tasted it. it; tastes really good. In a pinch, you can buy store bought eggnog. Just buy the unspiked version. I'm putting it in this very fancy. Somebody gave me these. Look at this. Somebody I gave bet, me this. I bet That's more nice. people make their own shoes than make their own eggnog. <laughs> that statistically, <laughs> I will stand by that. I've never been so happy to shut on a point. Christy just made uh, homemade eggnog. Oh, yes, you're married oh, to a fucking superwoman. We get it. I knew someone would do it. <laughs> God well, damn so, it. <laughs> well, wait so, a minute, but how many pairs of shoes did she make in the interim? She made six shoes. All right. Well, I rest my case. You're right. You're right. (laughs) She's a cobbler. No, she's a bartender. She's both. Mm. Uh, Sorry. So for this, I'm going to pour it in, in my glass. I got a nice, somebody gave me this really nice glass for the holidays. I'm very thankful for that. And then the rum that we're using, or excuse me, the bourbon that we're using. And it is, man, this is one of my favorites. It's called Rabbit Hole. I named Cave mm. Zamanian started it. He's a he's a really a master with making mm. bourbon. This one's called Rabbit Hole High Gold Bourbon. It's about seventy dollars a bottle. So this is the most expensive thing we're going to be having tonight. They what they do here with this one is unusual. Is they toast the barrels over a wood fired flame before they char them. Mm-hmm. That toasting coaxes out like extra sugar from deep in the fibers of the wood. So you're going to get a lot of complexity and flavor with this. There's toasted malt, warm baking spices on the nose. And then why I thought this would work really well with the eggnog is you the, the, the bourbon itself inherently in it, you've got butterscotch, citrus, pepper. I just think it's going to be a perfect match for my eggnog. And so I'm gonna, how much, how much as you want. Do you, mix, do you okay. mix it up? I guess you yeah, should. You, right? Yeah, pour it in there and, you know, do as much you want and then mix it up a little bit. Give it a stir. And if you have any ground nutmeg, and that's the yep. wrong thing, if you have ground nutmeg, put that on there. I actually have a cinnamon stick. That, and I'm going to give my... I'm giving that a Eggnog nice looks like a sweet hollandaise sauce. 
Oh man, I yes. can't wait. It looks so like that's a, on other shit too, but uh I'm throwing my I'm throwing my cinnamon stick in there. There it goes. Gina, you've and, uh, never twenty nine years of age, never had right? a, never never oh, had eggnog. Almost three decades on this almost mortal three coil and I've never decades had and it. Never... How is that possible? <laughs> I'm Jewish. I don't know. We don't have eggnog. You don't have eggnog. Right. Bottoms I mean, Adam, up. Adam had a good point. It's not, I wouldn't make this a regular part of your uh, cocktail uh, regimen because it, it's very rich, but mm. man, is that good? Yeah. You know, I always was freaked out by like creamy alcoholic cocktails, but I think we just broke through that barrier because this is fine as fuck. <laughs> yeah. When I get it. <laughs> Gina's feeling. God, we mm. missed you so much on that first drink. I, I mm. like when you're on board for all four drinks, Gina. I <laughs> I'm just so find, sorry, my audio went out. Man, you're usually hitting your stride it. by drink three, and now you're <laughs> you're a little bit. Uh, I know. Us. I got to catch up. Yeah, um, that is I, awesome. Yeah, and and again, it's 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 a uh, get, the ingredients make a difference. You got to have good eggnog. You got to have good bourbon. If you do crappy things, you get crappy drinks. But we don't do that here on. When I come on to the Adam Carolla show, which is well, I would never delicious. do that to you guys. Yeah, that bourbon is stellar. I, yeah, rabbit hole. I mean, rabbit hole is one of my favorites. And and again, Ace, obviously, you're not going to be making a bunch of eggnog with this all the time. I mean, this is beautiful in an old fashioned. It's a it's a drink it neat. I mean, it's a great a great whiskey. This makes you feel like a sexy gingerbread cookie. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> I agree, Mrs. Claus. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is good. And uh, it's it's very, like, you know what you're celebrating when you uh, get the eggnog and you put the uh, Kentucky straight bourbon in there. Like, it is uniquely, oh. the holidays is uniquely Christmas. I kind of like that. Like, I kind of like when you're drinking something and you know what time it is and where you are. Like, we're kind of talking about the rum and the daylight and the refreshing and the you know backyard barbecue sort of thing and this is that but this is uniquely nighttime and uh it's got to be within four days of december 25th and i i like that like i, I like when you know you know it's like when you drink a a, a light beer it could be any time any day anywhere whatever like it doesn't have a stamp on it this has a stamp on it i like that Mm. I think you could freak somebody out if like, what about in like June? What if you go to a, uh, like a part, like a barbecue <laughs> in July and you just show up with some fucking eggnog? Eggnog. I think it'd be <laughs> great. She'd be like, hey guys, guys made a batch. You guys got beer, right? All right. I brought the eggnog. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, it's weird. I always say that about fish and chips. Fish and chips is the best thing I never eat. And eggnog is the best thing I never drink. It's like, you know it, it's there. It's out. It's ubiquitous. I never buy it. I never drink it. I'm same with fish and chips, but I love it every single time. Oh, this is good stuff. Mm. Uh, and again, all of these recipes, I got them on my Instagram, WWD underscore podcast. They'll be there with photos. You can see what they're supposed to look like and all that good stuff. But you can still blow me up on, on social media anyway. It uh, happens every time I do the show. I love it. Um, and I, By yes. the way, guys, I do want to say that real quick. Uh, Ace, uh, it's been a tough year. And I, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, getting to come on here regularly and spend time with you guys, engage with your fans on social media, it's been a real uh, source of joy and strength for me over the last nine, 10 months of what we've been dealing with. So I want to say thank you, Gina and Brian and Max Zapata and Dawson and the rest of the crew. And of course, you, Adam, for continuing to have me on here. And I just want to say thank you guys. That It's been of course. It's been, well, Thank you always, for always showering us with these amazing. Yeah, keep having boosh off my porch. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we always get great feedback on this segment, and I think it's because uh, people hear it and then they want to go out and do it. And you always pick stuff that's uh, accessible. You know, most expensive bottle, seventy bucks, and uh, they're all in the sort of thirty-five to forty range. Other than that, and it's ingredients you can find. It's not. It's not exotic. There's nothing worse than when you do this shit and you're showing off and you got to know somebody to get the shit and you can't find it anywhere and it's all sold out and all that kind of shit, which is like, it's fine. But if people who are listening can't ever access any of this stuff and can't procure it, well, then uh, what good is it? So I, that I like being said, that if you ever want to do that every once in a while, we're fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, your your fans are it's incredible how much they they get it. I mean, I'm getting, but by the way, some of them are pretty funny. They just, they don't even like, there's no please like Dan, 
you were on Corolla <laughs> seven months ago and you did <laughs> Irish whiskey. I just got this tweet from a guy. He goes, you did Irish whiskey. This is probably seven months ago. And he said, what were the whiskeys and rank them for me? Uh, me, not pl- will you just rank them for me in the order you like them with some of your tasting notes i was like anything else anything <laughs> you want me to do anything else should i uh come to my home pillow? and cut my balls <laughs> while i drink these whiskeys in order of your rankings <laughs> all right dan uh you're gonna hang with us and do a yeah, little buzz absolutely. news i got a bunch of cocktails now yeah let's all this. right let me uh hit better help and then we'll uh roll right into uh gina and her uh, slightly altered news Yay. Better help. Uh, overwhelmed, anxious, depressed. Well, that's what we've been uh, talking about. Online licensed professional counselors who are trained to listen and help. Uh, look, you got to get your head right, baby. It's coming into 2021. You get your head straight and then you can go out and do anything you want. Anxiety, grief, depression, relationship conflicts, difficulty, sleeping, anger, family conflicts, self-esteem and more. You fill out a questionnaire that assesses your needs. Sorry, says he needs a hiccup. You get matched in under 48 hours. Easy to uh, schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages. Everything shared is confidential. If for any reason you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one and uh, get a new one at no charge. Join the over 1 million people using BetterHelp. It's BetterHelp, right, Dawson? BetterHelp is an affordable option, and our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code Corolla. Get started today at BetterHelp.com slash Corolla. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Corolla. Talk to a therapist online and get help. All right, let's take a uh, quick break. We'll come back and do the news right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gino Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdowns. Give news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So China's Aviation Authority has a new set of COVID-19 safety plans uh, to protect flight attendants. And what would we imagine those are? Wear your mask. Don't uh, let anyone sneeze on you. Oh, also, if it's all the same to you, go ahead and put on an adult diaper while you're serving people because they're afraid that um, you're getting too much infection risk by going in and out of the lavatories. So while you're serving people, just go ahead and uh, piss in your pants. So they want to wear, yep. Wear adult diapers ought to make that easier for them to do. Even if it's uncomfortable, um, they're not going in and out of the bathroom. Hey, can I say this um, as a uh, father of twins? Uh, Kids diapers always have a strong theme. You know what I mean? They got the Disney characters on there. They got the, yeah, I got all that. Teddy bears. (laughs) Yeah, Winnie the Pooh, the ironic Winnie the Pooh. Well, how come adult diapers don't have any theme? You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, hey, I like Carl Sagan. Why, <laughs> why is he not represented on my diaper? You know what I mean? Right. Dan, Dan has mixologist. He likes dry gin. You, you know what I mean? Like why, why just a plain Jane adult diaper? What happened to the fun? What happened to the merriment? What happened to the pageantry? You know, That's where a good question. Kind of, look, I got a team. I like the Rams. Where's my Rams there adult you diaper? You're a USC man. Yeah. Oh, you know, well, I wouldn't give. Yeah, you love Dolly Parton, Gina. Oh. Where, where's the theme? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what, why do we have stop having fun with diapers? At what? Why, why is the cutoff at five and a half? Yeah. Why well, is it so morose now that we're, you yeah. know, that you're in your seventies? Why is it a thing of shame? Yeah, or even uh, sending a message, Black Lives Matter, or whatever. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like whatever where, you're into. Whatever you're into. Why is it got to be just? Yeah. Have any of you ever worn an adult diaper for any reason? Uh, I wish. Um, no. Well, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting, because I have a friend. Can who I say I this? Went- any diaper By an way, adult I love how you just wears skipped right over it. becomes you, you, an adult you? diaper. Yes, okay. Well, what did no, you? Well, I want. Yes. I want to know, Dan, because I have a friend who had to get them after a surgery and she was so ashamed and she was humiliated. She was like, "Gina, I'm never going back. These are amazing." Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> We wore them to actually, it was a thing when we, we, you know, well, actually we weren't even in college. I think it was after college to actually take a shit in a diaper. 
I lived with, and we were like, let's take it. So we wore the diapers and took shits in the diapers to see what it would feel like to take shits in diapers as mm. adults. Mm. And you know what? <laughs> I couldn't imagine serving drinks with a load of shit in my diapers. Like what happens if it's like a, if it's a, a, an international flight, it's like 10 hour flight and the flight attendant takes a shit like yeah. two hours into it. Does she walk or, or he or she walk around with shit in the diaper? Cause that, you can't go in the bathroom. It. That doesn't eliminate the smell. That still permeates. Right. But you're eventually it's going pungent. to have to go in the bathroom, right? That's you, true. I think the conceit of the adult diapers, it's for number one. But That's this, my is, guess. this <laughs> is an interesting point you brought up, Dan. <laughs> and by the way, I thought you were going to say that you're in Ire Ireland and you're going pub hopping yeah, and right, you yeah, know yeah. but i didn't this know this was just literally some sort of scatological bizarre science fecal it's science thing. Yeah, right. we, want, we wanted we wanted to know what it actually i don't know who even had the idea but it was like what would it f feel like to shit in a diaper i I, yeah, I feel like i could wrap my exactly, mind around that it yeah feels exactly what you think it would feel like yeah yes you know there's a there's a whole subsection of porn called infantophiles and they do that i don't like this yeah so I don't, what's it to you <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm just I telling mean, you. I mean, no, I, I, is there? All right. Yeah. So before we harsh my mail too much more, <laughs> is there such a thing as an, is there, all right, let me ask this. All right. Hold on. Kids diapers. Sorry. Kids have no control. They don't know if they're doing right. number one. They don't know if they're doing number two, but adults, they got a little more range, a little more yeah. control, you know? So a little more of a heads up. Why isn't there an adult diaper for number two? You know what I mean? With an extra hopper down there. Like the right. the gurney like a kangaroo pouch. Yeah, the gurney bubble. If you guys uh, want to check out the Ford GT forty. Like it's just an extra little space back there. Because the diaper commercials, by the way, the adult okay. The adult diaper commercials I see now have women I would like to fuck. On the commercial, <laughs> no, I which is a, too this recently. is a sad no, state of affairs. No. This is sad. These are attractive, youngish, you know, 40 something year old women who are going to like Pilates classes and stuff. And they're pulling up their diaper and they're wearing yoga pants and you can't see it under the yoga pants. Like there's a whole thing going on. But I, I think if we had the theme going, I think it would be like, you know, like, if I was at a ball game and I pulled down my shorts and somebody saw adult diapers, then I would be, there'd be much ridicule around it. But if it was like a Dale Earnhardt signature series or something, I think I'd probably score points, you know? So if we could start yeah. coming up with themes for adult diapers, that would be awesome. I'm, I'm hoping that the Chinese or the China airlines, it seems like a number one situation dan you know. I, don't, I don't think it's a number two well i mean situation. even that i mean even having piss in your diaper for eight hours would not be pleasant and probably yeah, not probably not for the for the passengers either i you're... would argue that if you piss up while you're taxiing before you take off that's kind of on you you know what i mean like i feel like you got to get your timing down a little better than that like you shouldn't just pull up the diaper and then soil it you Go ahead and relieve yeah. yourself in the captain's lounge, then put the adult diaper on. Then, you know, when you're flying to Australia, hour number 11, now's the time. You know what I mean? Well, you know, the f most famous news story about the adult diaper, the one that really put it back on the map. Do you guys remember? Mm. It was the woman oh, the astronaut, the astronaut. Oh, the astronaut. who put on an adult diaper and drove across the country to go. What was it? Catch her man. Catch her man at cheating. Mm. Wasn't that why she's driving across the country? Yeah. Settle his hash. Right. Okay, yeah, adult. she was smart. Uh, truck drivers and astronauts are grandfathered into the adult That's diaper right. world. I don't, I don't judge. Well, I'm not sure if he wears an adult diaper, but while he was hospitalized, he might have needed one. George Clooney lost 28 pounds for his role in the movie The Midnight Sky, and it landed him in the hospital. Because according to U the UK's Mirror, he's 59, by the way. He developed pancreatitis a few days before filming was supposed to begin. He was hospitalized with stomach pains. Clooney also directs the movie and adds, we're out on this glacier in Finland, which made it a lot harder to work, but it certainly helped with the character. Because in the movie, George plays a scientist who races to contact a crew of astronauts in the Arctic to warn them not to return to Earth. And I don't know if this is just hot publicity for the movie, but it comes out December 23rd, The Midnight Sky. Is it? 
in theaters? Is there in theaters? What's well, going on with theaters? Well, didn't Warner Brothers make the um, make the deal with HBO Max that all their movies are going to come out in theaters and on HBO Max? So that could be it, but I'm not sure. And when's, uh, speaking of uh, your doppelganger, when is Wonder Woman coming out? I've been seeing spots. Christmas, Christmas Day. <clears throat> That's Christmas yeah. Day? That can be- That'll be uh, supposedly on Disney Plus and theaters on the same day. Or possibly rent. Well, either way, same. Yeah, are theaters the, open. Theaters are open. That's now? why they're making these deals to have them come out on, uh, you know, HBO Max, Disney Plus, because nobody can see it otherwise. Yeah, and it's it's HBO Max, uh, not Disney uh, Plus. Yeah, yeah and, oh, uh, and next year, Disney, uh, of course. yeah, every Disney. Warner Brothers movie is going to be simultaneously released on HBO Max. Yeah. Yeah, the problem always is it's it's not the technology, it's not the size of the screen or the sound system or whatever. It's your ability to pause. That's that is the foible. That's what gets us. Yep. Like you just go, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to make a phone call, or I'm going to go to the kitchen. Like you don't realize <clears throat> that the um, the captive audience part, the part where you're in the theater and it's starting and it's going and you can't move and you can't get up and leave and whatever that fucking pause button. I don't know. I don't know what the over under is on the pause on like a two hour movie watched at home. It's gotta be five and a half pauses. Mm. Yeah. And that's the part that fucks everyone up. That's what ruins the experience. It's your control. There should be, it should be like TV in a hotel room where you can't stop it. You can't rewind it. You can't do anything about it. There should be a thing where you watch this movie and it's just, it starts and it just goes through. There's no stopping it. There's no repeating it. There's no rewinding it. It's just there. It sounds cruel, but it would be the best thing for people to watch it. Agreed. Agreed. All right. You guys have, do you guys have this issue where you fall asleep during a movie but you don't remember whether you actually watched the movie or not. Yeah. Had, like where I, I'll fall asleep and I'm like, I think I watched it, but I might. And then I go back and I'm like, holy shit, I didn't watch any of it. I fell asleep yeah. like that's, five minutes in, but I, yeah. That's where that, the diaper comes in. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, why do I have shit in my diaper? Yeah. Uh, anyway. It's Speaking of uh, airplanes, uh, I don't know if you saw this video. This is from the weekend. A bold gentleman was taken into custody after he climbed onto the wing of an Alaskan Airlines plane, was grounded, by the way, at Las Vegas Airport Saturday. I'm going to show you the video while I tell you about it. He's kind of chilling on the wing, and then he gets a wild hair to start climbing up the upended part at the end. Uh, this is at McCarran call, International. I think they call that a canard. Sure. Okay. He tries. He tries to climb the canard. His shoes he, off. Yeah. He takes his shoes and his socks off. Uh, he'd hop the perimeter of the fence. He was observed by airport staff around 140. Video shows him as we're watching. He's kind of sitting there. Then he removes his socks and shoes. He's trying to climb up the winglet. They call it the Boeing 737's winglet. That's the upturned part of the plane. Um, as police officers approach the man, you'll see that in a second. He just can't get up there. He slides down the winglet and falls onto the tarmac. Officers took him into custody. He was taken to a medical facility. So that suggests that he probably wasn't just some drunk dude, but maybe was having some sort of an episode. Feel like feel like there's an episode involved with that. Is a yeah. canard a winglet is not a canard. Canard's in the front. Yeah, that's it's the little wings like in the front of the. Nah, that is a winglet. Ah, uh, by the way, that that sounds like a mini uh, buffalo wing or something. That's right. Winglet sounds soft. I want something a little more, a little more gravitas <laughs> in my aviation. A dozen winglets speak. for two ninety nine. Yeah, that's right. And dip and sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, isn't a canard isn't a canard. A, maybe I'm thinking of something completely. I thought a canard was like a rumors it is it, it's a distraction like a rumor distraction Ooh. but it's also if you see a fighter jet or like a supersonic jet and you see those weird little wings that come out up front like by the uh, cockpit a four wing a four wing wow. that's a that's a canard as well i don't know if they spell in the same way it's interesting they do oh they do yeah. all right so the canard uh, give us the uh yeah, we're looking at a fighter jet. Yeah, the wing before the wing is a is a canard. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why then they're spelled the same and why they it also means kind of a distraction and a goof or something. But uh, look it up, Max Pat. It'll be it'll be interesting. <laughs> okay. and, Fun fact: the uh, Israeli fighters just don't have the four uh, 
scan. Before wing. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, yes, go ahead. I just got a breaking news fast. alert. Mm. Breaking news alert right now. Cleveland baseball team will drop Indian's name. Mm. So we'll look for that in the coming days. How about the Canards? But it's, yeah, the Canards. That's a decent name known as Cleveland Canards. No No one knows what it means. It's it's got a strong aviation and a distraction (laughs) sort of base there. Same logo. (laughs) Same logo. (laughs) The the origin is it's it's old French for like literally a duck or to quack. So and then it became rumors, and then I don't know why it's called. how to get to on, now it's onto an airplane. Least, it's making yeah. less sense than it made before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks That's for the, no the help. Well, the it. first definition is that it's a it's a rumor, and then the second one is actually the aeronautic term. Hmm. Uh, so the the mascot for the Cleveland Indians, I can see some people might find offen- offensive, but. I don't know. It was Indian offensive. So I think Chief Wahoo is, is Chief the, Wahoo the real is, problem. Right? Chief Wahoo. Yeah. Are they going to be the Cleveland baseball team? I think every That's, team that has to, they should just go follow the the. I almost said Redskins, the Washington, Washington football team's example, and just it's bad, you know you get it, you get what's happening. I know what the yeah. Washington football team is doing. There's no guessing there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, until we figure out that Washington or Lincoln or all these, it's some uh, Columbus. At some point, the actual towns that they're in are going to be a no-fly zone. So then it's not even <laughs> yes. going to be about the team name. We're going to have to shut down. We have to change the name of the town, and then it'll be the Washington football team. But Washington will be unacceptable. All That's right. right, all right. And the term canard great. arose from the uh, appearance of the Santos Dumont fourteen bis in 1906, a plane that was reminiscent of a duck with its neck stretched out in flight. Oh, oh. so it's all kind of duck-oriented. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next, we'll get into Mark Twain's name. All right, here we go. <laughs> so everyone feels like they didn't really get a lot done this year, you know, pandemic, and you know, oh, just sit tight and shelter in place. Not Little Miss Gitanjali Rao. She is 15 years old. She's a scientist and inventor. She's been named Time Magazine's first ever kid of the year so while we were all sitting on the couch getting fat what was ms rao doing let's find out well at 10 years old she created a lead detection to i'm sorry a lead detection tool after learning about the water crisis in flint michigan since then she's come up with an app that helps diagnose early stage prescription opioid addiction and another tool that can thwart cyberbullying. Her opioid tool, opiate tool, uses recent developments in protein detection methods to assist in identifying addiction early on. After a sample of bodily fluid is analyzed, a user can receive the results on a mobile app, in addition to their resources such as a map of addiction centers close by, according to Ms. Rao. How old, she came is, up this, with the, how yeah, old is this chick? She's, She's 15, but she came up with the lead detection one when she was 10. I guarantee this chick has a 14-year-old brother named Russ who's in juvie. (laughs) (laughs) There's a connection there. Fucking Thanksgiving is miserable for Russ. (laughs) He's got like an ankle bracelet. And they're like, well, your sister just came up with another app. This one uh, to detect uh, early stages of Alzheimer's. What did you do? (laughs) Uh, I ate shit on a shingle today. (laughs) <laughs> I got put in the hole. I polished the warden's shoes. Yeah. Has, yeah. She ever worn a, has she ever worn a diaper I, to see what it feels like to crap your pants? <laughs> There's probably an app you, for that. So, you know what? Mm. Call me. Come back to me then, Yeah, scientists. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. When, you're, oh. when you're willing to go that far to find out how stuff is. Hey, can and, I well, s- yeah, I got yeah. the time that they gave Biden and Harris man of the year. Like, I don't like any of this dual shit. Like, you got to pick a person. You can't pick two people. What about when they picked the journalist? Yeah, yeah. I'm not down with that either. Pick the best journalist or pick Biden mm-hmm. or pick Harris. Like, you got to you can't just fucking open it up. It's not a gill net. You have to fucking pick somebody and go with it. You can't just go yeah. everybody. And that's nobody. Well, Um, because some of us might not be feeling enough shame over what this 15 year old has done when she's not building these apps and detecting who's uh, hooked on meth and doing everything she's doing. She spends her time working towards her pilot license. Oh my God. Flies airplanes. That's a canard. Yeah. (laughs) I bet she knows the proper definition of canard. She she can tell us. Jesus Christ. 
I only thought of this. Well, it's an auction story, but it made me think of little Sonny talking about the Greek freak, Mr. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Something. On Kunpo. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Notice the Greek freak. His rookie card was just sold uh, at Golden Auctions on Sunday. Any guesses what that was sold for? Oh, I'd found out that uh, Newman's second watch went for about 5.5 million bucks. Damn. So that's uh, that's good for anyone who owns Newman race cars. Um yes. So that was for those good. lucky people. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't his uh, his first one for like eighteen point seven, but uh, either way. And uh, Dan, I've I've told these guys this, but we have completely ended. Uh, we're, we're no longer in the throes of racism in this country with the new generation because uh, I talked to my son about um, whatever the Greek freak is. And he was telling me about this guy's vertical and his wingspan. This is like four years ago and what a freak of nature he was. And I was like, and he is black? And my son was like, he's Greek. And I was like, yeah, but <laughs> but black, he looks black? And he's like, I don't know, he's Greek. And I kept saying, right, but with the big vertical and dunking from the free throw line and all that kind of stuff, black? And he's like, he's Greek. I kept going, but does he look? I'm, I'm, as hard as I try to turn my son into a racist, I can't do it these Couldn't days. Do it. And I was like, "What does he look like? Does he physically look black?" And he's like, "Yeah, I get, yeah, he looks black, but he's he's great." Now that you mention it, yeah. And I thought, "Oh, we're we've evolved into that. That's where we're at now as a society. It's a good thing too." So where's yeah. he going? Was he on the? Uh, he was on the bull. No, he was Milwaukee Bucks. 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 Yeah, sorry. And excuse me, Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, mm -hmm. it just rolls off the tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, so his rookie card was sold for one point, essentially one point two million dollars mm. on Sunday. Wow! The card uh, was rated a nine point five um, in the in the uh, uh, featuring a perfect ten for the edges and corners, and even a rare Giannis rookie card set the record for the highest price basketball card in modern history selling for 1.8 million in September. So if you can find a mint rookie card of this guy, you will be cashing in. I say that this wow. must be like a one of one or something, because usually they're mass produced. There's hundreds of thousands of them. Well, look at him there. You can see he's totally Greek. <laughs> he looks Greek. I'd he like to get Greek. a, I'd, my next lifetime, I'd like to come back as a card condition Raider. <laughs> Like I'd go, it's, it's a 9.3, it's not a 9.5. And then the other guy would be like, I have it at 9.6. And I'd go, well, you're wrong. Yeah. You're just <laughs> you wrong. You've been out this long enough. <laughs> that you know was, what? by the yeah. way, the most, the most pathetic, uh, in the pantheon of pathetic conversations I've had all throughout my youth is all throughout junior high and high school, they would issue your, um, your textbook, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to fill out your textbook card. Mm -hmm. And then they'd give you some kind of way. You know who the winner students were? The winner students in my junior high and high school were the students who got the textbooks. They'd always tell you, you got to cover them. You got to cover them. Oh, yeah. You yeah. got a new, uh, uh, grocery bag. The yep. winner students are the ones who came back the next day, had the brown paper yep. grocery bag and it was fucking crisp like yep. sharp corners no seams you could bounce a quarter off that thing like it looked like a bed that was made in the military you know i My, could never figure out how to do that. i had no fucking idea how to do that i couldn't get a sleeping bag back into its bag you know what i mean like that that's a four-day affair for me and i have to go I'd, I'd be on the ground i have to use my feet so like I couldn't have, I'd always see those winners come in the next mm -hmm. day that have it laid out perfectly. There was a second winner. Those are the ones who went to the school like snack shack and bought the covers with the school logo oh. on it. And they would oh. fold it up, you know, accordingly. I never Rock fucking put a cover on my book. I was always in my locker. My locker had fruit flies in it because uh, I had some fruit in there and I just kind of let it go. I used to also, here's the mark of a bad student. I would intentionally jam my locker. Like if you took a paper towel and you folded it up and you shoved it in the mechanism and then you slammed the door, you couldn't get the thing open. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to go down and get a pair of pliers from like the PE department. But 
the biggest argument I ever had, and it, again, think about the crazy waste of time this is. You'd get the book, and uh, then you'd get the little card you had to fill out. You yeah. write the name of the book, and then they they want to know the condition. Mm-hmm. And you're like, this is clearly a C condition book. Yeah. It's got some miles on it. And they'd be like, that's a B. That's B condition. I go, eh. You it's, think this is fair? Yeah, you it's got poor. Look at these it's dog poor. ears. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, we'll give it a we'll give it a B. And it's always a big debate discussion. Yep. Like, eh, give it a C because when you turned it in, it was in a D condition. You want to get into trouble? <laughs> Jesus Christ! The kids even gonna have to do that anymore. It's insane. Do they have books? Isn't it all digital? Books? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I yeah. I think they just sit home on their computers. Yes. Um, speaking of, uh, you know, authentication and, and auctions, somebody sent me a video recently and it, it shocked the hell out of me. Someone said, your dad was just mentioned on Pawn Stars. And my dad's a sports announcer, but I thought, mm, doubtful, but okay. No, no, no. They said Steve Grad. So they sent me the clip and it says like they're they're trying to get a price on, I think it's it's something sports. It's like a, a ba- basketball that everybody signed. And the clip is someone going, yeah, and Steve Grad's name's on there too. So, you know, now you know it's worth something and it's legit. And I was like, what the hell? Because, I mean, I mean, my dad knew all the sports guys. But so I Googled it. There is a Steve Grad who is a is an autograph authenticator in Vegas. Oh. And apparently oh. does a lot of these like Pawn Star and that type of thing. And he's like a big deal. So did oh. not know there was another Steve Grad and that's what he does for a living. I'd like to come back as an as an autograph authenticator. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and change <laughs> it from baseball card, playing card, <laughs> basketball card, grade giver to authenticator. <laughs> sure. I like yeah. that. Also, you're if you're an authenticator, I think people have to listen to you. Sure. You know what I mean? Like it's right there. They can't your, debate. Your wife comes home and goes, uh, "Hey, the front door was unlocked." You go, "I didn't do it," and she'd go, "Well, you were the last person leaving." And I go, "Hey, baby, I'm an authenticator. <laughs> you think I can play fast and loose with the truth? That's my if livelihood." This, if this got out, yeah, yeah, my reputation Good is point. everything. If I say you left that door unlocked, then you left it unlocked. I'm an authenticator. Thank you, and I'm an well, authentic it's... person by by title. That's right. That's why you married me. That's right. Speaking of authentic, Mm -hmm. if you visit Walt Disney World, you will be wearing a mask. However, it might not be on you, but they will put it on you. According to Fox, Disney World has allegedly updated how it handles people not wearing masks on rides by digitally adding a face covering to the guest in the photos that can be purchased afterward. And I mm. believe we have the picture. So previously, Disney World wouldn't allow these. Uh, so can you see it's it's not super you know clear, but can you tell who has a giant Two-dimensional yeah, mask over their the face. The one in the back has a comically large mask on. It. That is correct. That's a that's a mouth diaper. It looks that's like. Right. Yeah. Look at that thing. Dan's Jesus. like, I'm just shit of that. Dan make short work of that fucking gag. So now the park is allegedly allowing guests to have their photos, but they will not be able to purchase their photo without that little sticker over their face. And the theme park, which is, of course, is open in Florida, not open in California, has not provided official comment. But according to Walt Disney World's website, face carvings are required and those who don't adhere to the mask guidelines will not be allowed to have their photo taken by photographers. Oh, I guess people were taking them off for the photo section of the Matterhorn or the ride or the flume or whatever it was. So people would probably wear them in line. And then when they got onto the ride, when they knew it was time to take the photograph, they would pop them off. But is she really the woman that's dying to get her, you know, like teenage prank on? This is like an elderly woman. Yeah, I I, I agree. But it's probably trying to thwart that. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. All right, let me hit uh, a sponsor and a a good one for Dan Dunn here. Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Holidays are going to look a little different this year. Mix up your cocktails, too. Screwball peanut butter whiskey, the ultimate duo. American whiskey and peanut butter flavor. Sweet, meat savory with a light, smooth finish. A 70 proof. It's a 70 proof, by the way. So you can enjoy it neat or you can do it on the rocks or you can do it as a shot. And uh, replace your usual whiskey and cocktails with Screwball for a whole new experience. 
Uh, you can top off uh, on a good big scoop of vanilla ice cream and top it off with a little screwball for the ultimate indulgence or date night or, you know, add it to coffee. Just uh, mix it up a little. We always have it here for the uh, Corolla Digital Christmas Party, and it's always a huge hit. And uh, add it to uh, some hot chocolate or some eggnog, as we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. For a nice festive treat, it is Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, right, Dawson? Screwball, the original and most awarded peanut butter whiskey, is now available near you. Pick up Screwball at your local store or get it delivered today. Ready to hashtag get screwed? Go to screwballwhiskey.com for more info and click to buy now. And click on buy now. Please drink responsibly. Advertisement by Screwball LLC. Advertisement by Screwball Spirits LLC, San Diego, California. Whiskey with natural flavors, 35% alcohol by volume. What else we got, Gina? An Italian man got into an argument with his wife, and he went for a little walk to clear his head. And when he was finally done walking, he was 280 miles from his house. Wow. He's 48 years old. He said he needed to get out and cool down, and he just kept walking. He ended up hiking about 40 miles a day until he was finally picked up by police at 2 a.m. a week later for violating the lockdown curfew laws. Police at first didn't believe he'd walk so far, but they checked him out, found his wife had actually reported him missing a week earlier. The man was cold and tired and said he hadn't realized how far he'd walked. Police called his wife and she drove to get him. He had to pay for his hotel stay and a fine for breaking the curfew. Well, now who's at fault in that argument? I mean, mm-hmm. here's a guy who's pretty out of it. He walked from, you know, here to San Francisco, and he didn't know that he'd mm-hmm. been on the road that long. Yeah, must have been a hell of a fight. Yeah, but on the other or, hand... Or whoever sold him the cocaine. Yeah, yeah that's right. But can't get you walking that far. Well, what about yeah. the shrew who made him, yeah. you know, hit the trail? You know, that's right. got to be pretty bad, too. I'm trying to think, who would we rather be with? The guy? The guy's fit. You know what I mean? He's in yeah. good shape. De- right? Determined determined he's got uh he's motivated headstrong headstrong the gals uh you know probably a bit of a shrew i don't know i i I like the guy in this this mix i like uh forrest gump he's got exactly what he's gonna say he's got a certain forrest gump quality to him so maybe he's clever invented a lot of things and you know where where was he italy how far can you walk in Italy before you get to like I don't know Spain or somewhere? Don't you have to go? Don't you get in other countries at some <laughs> yeah, point? Yeah, he must have been walking north and south as opposed to east and west. He yeah. walked two hundred eighty miles. Think about how long he was that still in the same is. country. Maybe he just went in a circle around his home. <laughs> he didn't end up back at home though. Never left his township. Yeah, <laughs> and the police got him for breaking curfew essentially, or at not? Two a.m. Just sort of strolling. Hmm. Super spreader. All right, let's yeah. do one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, in honor of Dan, if you guys have been listening to the show. Well, where's Gina going? My- too much eggnog again. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Gina just dove off her chair. What Hello? happened, Gina? Got me. You got me? Yeah, we got you, got you now. Oh, my God. The, so for, for my Hanukkah present, Andy's buying... Uh, me a new computer. So just hold tight. Give me like a couple of days and we'll have a new computer. So in honor of Dan, um, if you guys have been listening and you want to get your uh, get your drink on, but you really like beer, well, now's the time to go check out McLeod Ale Brewing Company in Van Nuys, right here in uh, our neck of the woods in California. They're offering beer for life for $24.99. That's $2,499. The brewery specializes in ales served from hand pumps rather than the uh, draft system, and it's selling memberships to its Founders Club 2020 for 2500 bucks. So with that, you can get any beer, any style for as long as you shall live. I never really, like wrap my head around the for life or lifetime supply. Like when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I'd always watch game shows. They'd be like the price of the price is right. Yeah. And they'd go Carnuba wax. And they go, that's a lifetime supply of blue turtle oh. Carnuba wax. Yeah. But <laughs> when you get an eight ounce canister of paste wax, it is kind of a lifetime supply. <laughs> I mean, like you're going to wax your car once a year you're going to go in there. You're going to smear some of that onto the buffer. You're not going to go through that fucking can. I mean, it's, it's yes, Brian. 
Dan Dan Dunn has sent us three lifetime supplies of vermouth over the years. <laughs> you have, there's no you, way you're getting no. That but here's the problem, bottle. man. You know the vermouth goes bad. Oh vermouth, no! Oh, like, what? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. You can only vermouth. You can only both of these vermouths you have here. You better start making martinis because in three months, the, uh, first of all, put the vermouth. I should have probably told you this. Put both of these bottles that you've now opened in the refrigerator. Now that you've okay. opened them, you need to put them in the refrigerator and you got about two and a half months that they're going to be good. And after yeah. that, it's it's bad. Now, as far as this beer thing goes, let me just tell you something. I'm never a fan of paying for, because I this is what I think about. It's the same sort of philosophy that I apply to not really wanting to age and hold on to wine. I always feel like I'm going to be in the airplane and it's starting to go down. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God damn it, why did I pay for all that why did I pay for that beer? You know, right. I, 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 I just had this happen. I got a, I, I'll admit it. I got a Peloton and it gives you the payment options. And I was like, well, I'm going to stretch it out as far as I can, because if I die, yeah. then I won. Like I got, That's right. like, I got the Peloton without paying for it. Same thing with the beer thing. If I, why would you pay? What if you quit drinking or what if you mm. move out of Van Nuys, which you should. Uh, <laughs> what? Why would you do that? What's the benefit? Can anybody good tell me what the benefit is to paying for that ahead of time? It's definitely to tell people yes. you did it. I, I don't think there's any real sort of pragmatic. It's a canard. Come on, let's be honest. It's a goddamn canard. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's a canard. You do it if you're on that plane and you're wearing your diaper and it's going down, <laughs> and there's the winglet, fifteen year old pilot, the winglet's on fire, and uh, the canard <laughs> yeah. is all bent. <laughs> why, why did I join that beer club? And why am I flying on this goddamn Chinese airline where That's I'm right. smelling shit on the way down? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't. I I think it's uh I think it's for you to tell for you to tell the story. I I don't. Right. I don't. I I don't see. I don't see the necessity. I it's up there with timeshares, and you know maybe we'll see a lot of it. Like you know, if you turn on Fox News, every third commercial is how to get you out of a timeshare. Right. Yep. Maybe five years from now, it's going to be commercials about did you buy beer for life? I'm attorney <laughs> Mark Johnson. <laughs> I can get you out of this for pennies on the dollar. Like maybe they'll be getting out or maybe they'll combine them. Did you buy beer for life? And did you get a condo in Boca Raton? I can help. I'm attorney, attorney Mark Johnson. I'll get you out of this. Look, get you. It's a bad sign for an industry when there's a whole cottage industry of how to get you out of it. Yeah, yeah. How to undo it. Yeah. They don't do that with like, I don't know, deep, dish pizza or something everyone likes it they agree on it no one's trying to get you out of it you know what i mean but evidently timeshares sound like a great idea and then everyone wants out at a certain point right i gotta ask i gotta ask you said it was a pump beer so when you say it's lifetime beer do you have to go there to drink the beer or do you can you you, can you call them up and say send me a case of beer you my friend are a good listener. It has to be consumed on the premises. Oh. And if you get oh too wasted, you, they cut you off. What? Yeah. yeah. Something tells me they're going to say one beer and you're too wasted. Yep. Sorry, right. buddy. You're at, yeah, this is re- the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. What's the name? Get- they get a fucking, uh, they get an intern to dress up like a highway patrolman and like stand by the front door and like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm waiting on a hoagie. I'll, I'll just be here. Just I'll just be it. here. Yeah. And everyone like takes half a sip and their hand shaking mm-hmm. they put the glass down and they walk away. Yep. No growler. What happened to the growler, Dan? Remember the growler? You could show up with your growler. You kill it up. Yeah. I remember, like, there's so many things back in the day that no longer exist. One of them was uh, when I used to live in Colorado, there was a bar that would do a St. Paddy's Day thing where everything was free or extremely cheap or free until the first person went to the bathroom. <laughs> now, this That's is before where the, the diaper oh, comes my. in. Oh, no, exactly. So, like, <laughs> people, guys would stand by the bathroom door, you know, and, nope, you're not going, you're not going. And I'm like, uh, wow. Yeah, litigation, I think, caught up with, you know, they used to do things, too. I'm from the East Coast. They would do like like beat the clock things. Do you guys remember this? Did they ever have this out here? No. There was a bar. The Jersey Shore would do these things. First of all, everybody's underage. Everybody in the bar is underage. So at eight o'clock from eight to nine, the drinks would be 25 cents. Yep. And then at nine o'clock, they would go to 50 cents, 10, 75. So about five minutes to nine. 
This is not a joke. 25 cents. About five minutes to nine, you'd walk up to the bar and be like, I'll take 10 beers for right. 250. Right. <laughs> hey, Dan, if you're ever talking to one of your lady friends and the diaper situation comes up, yes. work the Colorado Irish pub angle. And not the, hey, everyone wants to know what it's like to shit themselves, right? Like, do a little less of that and a little more Irish yeah. pub. Because now sure. we have the you diaper, but we got a good, solid motivation for the diaper. And I seem yeah. like a good guy. The only reason right. I was wearing the diaper is I just, I wanted to save people money. Right. That's all. That's yeah, right. All right. Yeah, like that. You're right. You're right, Ace. I think it's probably, I should not tell the other story again <laughs> if I want to get yeah. laid. Actually, I think most women... <laughs> Would rather hear in place of, uh, I just want to know what it's like to shit myself. I think they would rather hear, I just wanted to know what it was like to kill a man. I, yes. I really do yes. think that would be better in terms of your chances of getting laid that night, killing yeah. a man. I wanted to know what it's like to kill a man with my hands would give you a better opportunity to get your dick sucked than yeah. I just want to know what it's like to shit myself. I can't be the only woman who'd rather be choked than shat on. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's less weird, you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Wanting to kill, wanting to know what it feels like to kill someone is less weird yeah. than wanting to know what shit feels I, I'm like not, I, yes. You know what? I'm not going to judge it. I am going to say if you're talking to a lady yep. <laughs> and you have one choice, I would go with kill a man. Yeah, if those are the only two choices. If those are the only right. two. I would go, I want to know what it's like to choke the life out of another human being with my hands, then yeah. shit myself. That's me. Well, I, do, I do I do. want to meet a lady. You know why? Because I want somebody to make eggnog for me. Okay, Brian. I want to have a woman in my life that makes me eggnog, fresh. Yeah. Hey, should we all be so lucky? Yeah. I don't know what's right. in eggnog, but I enjoy it. What's Christy Lots. working on now? Like an orange Julius or something? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She would Christ. never lower herself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Last but not least, Simply Safe. You want to uh, stay safe at home? Might I suggest Simply Safe? Uh, flood, medical emergency, Simply Safe, home security, award winning 24 7 protection, no long term contracts, no hidden fees, no installation costs. And you get a free home security camera when you purchase Simply Two Eyes, Simply Safe. Simply Safe system. It's simplysafe.com slash Adam. All right, Dan Dunn, the best. Dan Dunn is the best podcast. What we're drinking with Dan Dunn. A lot of great big name guests, John Legend and Christy Brinkley and Jason Aldean and Pitbull, just to name a few. And you can shoot him a tweet at the imbiber. Uh, where should people go to find out all the recipes, uh, Dan, again? WWD underscore podcast. It's the new Instagram account. I gave the podcast its own. Inst I'm at the imbiber. You want to follow me? Mostly shirtless pictures of myself, but the podcast is growed up now so i gave it its own instagram so that i'll have all the recipes up there the exact things that we drank today save for uh brian's mm -hmm. uh eggnog yeah. that Christy made sorry yeah. mm -hmm. we don't all have people that love us uh, so next time yeah. somebody barks at you to give them uh the the recap you just direct them towards your instagram yeah yes. that's it from all now right. on that's what i'm gonna do that's what and I'm gonna do. uh you can go to amcarola.com i'm gonna be at the uh pickwick bowl in burbank uh coming up on the 23rd of january and i'm doing live shows everywhere so just go to amcarola.com and until next time man crow gina grad and Bob brian and dan dunn saying mahalo